Hello everyone and welcome back to my Let's Play Minecraft modded series. Today we're going to finish building the internal components for our nuclear reactor and hopefully place it and explain how it works. So let's get started. We need 18 IHDs and 32 coolant cells. We have the coolant cells. So we need the 18 IHDs. Which means we need 18 advanced alloy. And then we need to turn that into 18 plates. Like this. And take those plates and make them IHDs. I'll just use this one again. And as you can see, I'm going to use up just about all that half stack of advanced circuits that we made earlier. Sorry if this is a little destroying. I'm having a lot of problems recording today. Finally, have this set up, and we're done with the internal components. We're almost done. We will let. Make sure this has enough. It does. We'll stick these in here and go place these. And let's see. I better bring this with me. Sword still has a little bit left. Might need some torches. I think that's everything. Let's see. Long range. That was enjoyable. I hate the stupid spiders. We're also going to walk. A couple of buckets of water, which are down here, aren't they? And a sign. Take the sign and put it there. Now then you need to go in here. And we could use some dirt or something. Use some of these. Just put a temporary block right there. And place the reactor on top of it. And then you can get rid of it. Take the reactor chambers and place it around like this. Come on, let me out. And there's that. This is the access for yourself and the wiring. And this is the access for redstone signal. Now then, we want to go get some dirt. Let's see if we have some up here. Do good. And I can just stick these IHTs in here for now. So that I have some room. Okay, and I won't be needing this, just making sure I have enough room for the future stuff. Okay, so go up here and we need a infinite spring. Like this. That there, that there, oops, that there. Let's put a torch so I can see. 
Now then, swoops in a way. But we shouldn't need it now then that we have that template. We might though. Okay, what you want to do is take some water and put it around these edges here all the way around. See, did we get this one? Here, here. One in the middle, too. And there you are. You have a cooled reactor. We, we're going to do the other ones later. Probably after we get rid of that roof part, maybe. But that's all we need there. I should fill these buckets back up, but I can't. From down here. Okay, now then it's time to go get our coolant cells and our uranium cells. So I need to make room for two more. So I'll just get rid of the, that. As you can see, we need 32. Still don't have enough. Oh, I did. I will just start placing these. I have a screenshot here, which you probably can't see. But that's what I'm looking at, and then I will describe it after I have these placed. going to take a few minutes. Just bear with me. But I'm not going to cut this out so you can actually see how to place it if you're doing this for yourself. Now then, the next row. And three there. Now then, the next row. Just go here and the very last row how is that like this and we can go get a oh, lady stark we need to go rest We're also going to want some red alloy wire and a lever, which we have down there. Four of these. Those cells we set aside earlier. And four more of these. Just convert these to uranium cells. And before we stick the uranium in here, 
We want to make sure we're giving the reactor a redstone signal so that it doesn't turn on. You have to put it up here on the side like that. Take you. We'll just stick you right there. Now then, the very last bit. Good cells. Okay, to describe how this works after we kill that spider, because I do not want to listen to that. Okay. How this works. Each uranium cell works in what they call pulses. It pulses once for itself, and an additional time for each surrounding uranium cell. So the maximum you can have it is five pulses, once for itself, one if the uranium cell is here, an additional one if it was here, additional one if it's here, additional one's here. How I have it set up each uranium cell is going to pulse three times, one for itself, one for its two neighbors. Each time it pulses it produces ten E so I have three pulses times four uranium cells times t 10 EU, 120 EU per tick with this design. Also, each pulse, it generates heat. How much heat it generates depends on how many coolant cells or how many coolant items are surrounding it. These are either the integrated heat dispensers, the coolant cells are the reactor plating that these were made from. So depending on how many it um, is surrounded, the heating is going to vary by. If it has none surrounding it, it's going to generate 10 heat directly to the reactor hole. If it has one coolant component surrounding it, it generates 10 heat directly to that component. If it has two components surrounding it like this, it generates um, 8 heat divided evenly between these two, so 4 heat for each component. Three components surrounding it, they it get, generate 6 heat total, 2 for each component. If it has is completely surrounded by a component, it generates a total of four heat, one into each component. Now then, how these cooling components work, the coolant cells absorb heat and cool themselves at one heat per tick. These integrated heat dispensers are a little more complicated. They don't actually... Uh, cool they just redistribute the heat they take the heat they have and re and the heat that and the yeah, okay the heat they have they redistribute between themselves the reactor hole and all their surrounding cooling components evenly so you could think of them as like a big network plugged into the reactor hole so all the heat that's getting um, dumped into these integrated heat dispensers and their surrounding components around these cells that these cells are generating are going to be dumped into the um, the reactor hole by these integrated heat dispensers and then pulled from the reactor hole for, by these outside ones and dump into these coolant cells around them. You'll notice that every coolant cell here has a integrated heat dispenser next to it so that it can get heat. If it does if the coolant cells was like this and didn't have a uh, anything next to it to give it heat, it wouldn't cool cool the reactor at all because it doesn't have any heat to cool by. 
Now then, I'm probably going to need something right on for the next part. How heat works is a little more complicated, but you have each one of these, as I said, cools one per tick. Now then, you have the reactor itself, the middle generator part, and it records one per tick. Then each of these six record two per tick each, and each water block in a 3x3 three three area centered on the reactor records an, an, another one per tick. So the total is one for the reactor, 12 for the chambers, then 32 for the cells, and finally it's 27 blocks in a 3x3 three three area minus one block for the reactor minus six blocks for the chambers equals 20 water blocks, so 20 cooling. So our total cooling is going to be 52 plus 13 or 65. So we have 65 cooling total. Now then, our heat, as I said, we have three ticks each, but only two components surrounding this. So that means each reactor is going to generate eight heat times three. Total is going to be 96 heat. So we have 96 heat minus 65 Cooling equals, oops, that's 96, not 95. 96 heat minus 65. If I can type, cooling equals a total of 31 excess heat per tick. Now what happens to all this excess heat? Well, it goes into the reactor hole. And if the reactor hole gets... If the reactor hole gets above 65% of its maximum heat, it starts generating lava. If it gets at 100%, it generates a really large crater where your reactor used to be. So how to determine if it's too hot? Well, the reactor has a maximum heat capacity of a 10,000. Each of these um, chambers add a heat capacity to that, but it doesn't really matter because all these internal components only can hold 10,000 heat themselves. So if you try to go past 10,000, you'll melt your internal components. And basically, your reactor will just rapidly heat up past that. So you really want to consider 10,000 as your maximum heat value. So we have a heat capacity of 10,000 for the reactor. Then we have 32,000 for the coolant cells. Another 18,000 for the IHDs, so our total coolant power is 60,000 is our total heat capacity. Now we want to stay below 85% of that. As we said, we had 31 heat per tick excess, but the reactor runs for 10,000 Tick. So we have 31,000 excess heat, or 31,000 heat at the end of the cycle, and 31,000, 31K divided by 60K is less than 85%. 
which is what we want. And that is the basic design for this reactor. Now, a word on efficiency. As I said, we have to cool this between because we have this 31,000 heat. And if you divide that by 65 cooling, I can't do that in my head right now, or not quickly anyway. That doesn't seem right. I think I messed up. Um, uh, no. Okay, let's have to cool that one. It's uh, four hundred seventy-six point nine divided by twenty ticks in a second. So basically, twenty-three. Is that right? 23. No, it's longer than that. I know it's longer than that. Um, might be actually seconds. Times 20. Anyway, it has to cool for 476.9 ticks to be cooled back down to its original state. It's not entirely uniform because these don't quite cool uniformly when there's no heat being generated. So there'll be the last few seconds might take a little bit longer. Um, that's going to be all for this episode and our Mark II reactor. Next episode, we're going to work on a slightly different project. It'll be related to this. I think that's what I'm planning on anyway. We might do something different than I'm planning. I'm not sure. But we have, we're going to have our Mark II array down there. 16 reactor. They're going to have a breeder array up here. And I'm not sure where to put the experimental reactors yet. I'll either put them deep down or way above. They'll be more heavily shielded. I'm building the breeders up here because you have to um, change out their uh, cells twice every cycle. So it's going to take a lot more user magnets than these down here. Because I intend to run these in a series. So I only have to change out a whole batch at every few hours. Probably going to run like four per. I need to do them a series of rows. That's all for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.